Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm doing a preview of a game I'm super excited for. I got to play it a bit on TTS, but this is my first uh, chance to play the physical prototype, and that is Storyfold Wildwoods. And as always, no disclaimer for our crowdfunding coverage, we just want to help you make an informed decision. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast for reviews and design discussions, or join the conversation and come say hi on our Discord. So Storyfold is a solo-only game, technically, although it's the kind of game that my kids and my wife are going to love to play with me and kind of like take turns and discuss strategies together. But it is a story-based game with this really cool action dice-based system. And the game has a rule book, but you don't need it. The entire game kind of teaches itself through the cards. So I just want to kind of let you experience it the same way I am and just open her up. This is one of the most beautiful prototypes I've seen. You got that little magnet here, and this quote, Fear is a guide, but so is love, the raven replied softly, folding its wings. All right, story fold, wild woods. Many moons ago, fold out left, in a world of light and shadow, there was a girl named Luma. All right, let's take this out of the box and get things going. So to explain what you're seeing here, this is a booklet that's going to take you through the storyline and the stages of the game, but you always have this left and right leaf that kind of fold out to uh, control the actual action of the game and some of the key action spaces. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's keep folding. Let's start with the prologue and some narration. Call of the Wild. On a crisp morning, like so many others, Luma stood still at the edge of the river. Amidst the gentle sounds of flowing water and warmth of the early sun, a light breeze played with her hair. She savored the moment and sighed. Suddenly, a gust of wind sent a flurry of leaves past Luma's gaze. She watched in anticipation as the swirl settled atop the water, forming a trail stretching from her feet to the forest on the other side. The leaves glowed with a soft, luminescent light, beckoning her to approach. Heart pounding, Luma knelt down. She hesitated, then scooped one of the leaves into her palm. In an instant, a flash of light burst from her wrist. Luma's eyes widened. She felt as if the world had shifted. Before she could grasp her surroundings, a vision arose from the depths of her mind. She saw a young woman and an infant child giggling amongst the tall grass of the forest. Nearby, a large, majestic deer grazed peacefully until suddenly its head raised sharply in distress. Then, as quickly as the vision appeared, it dispersed into shadow, leaving only an echo of distant howls. Gasping, Uma found herself back by the river. A low rumble drew her attention to a calm, powerful bear at her side. It was her again, Brom, she whispered, her fingers stroking the bear's silvery white fur. The visions had begun several moons ago, each time leaving her more unsettled. There was something familiar about them, but what she did not know. For as long as she could remember, she had lived and cared for the creatures at the river's edge, just as Brom had cared for her. Her memories were distant, impenetrable, not unlike the dark forest beyond. But now something was stirring, a festering change that had spread from the forest. Critters were fleeing the woods in panic. The river had turned foul, and flowers that were meant to blossom now wilted. Even Eek, their playful squirrel friend, had not returned from his latest trip into the forest. Luma looked to Brahm, who stared back at her in expectation. She knew she could not wait any longer. The creatures are suffering, Luma thought to herself, but she had never dared to cross the river before. Okay, and here's some of the lovely art in the game. There's Luma by the river's edge, the dark forest beyond, her bear protector, Brahm. And let's jump in. Welcome to Storyfold Wildwoods. When you're ready, find the deck of cards. It says prologue on the front and read the first card, prologue one, to begin your journey. So there's that whole thing that kind of teaches you the game. If you would like to reset this deck, you could find the deck composition on the back of this card. So there you go. And it tells you not to shuffle things. Let's actually jump in. Welcome to Storyfold Wildwoods. In Wildwoods, you play as a young girl, Luma, and her bear companion, Brahm, who set out to heal the forest from a dark and mysterious shadow. The story of Wildwoods is experienced across five main chapters. Each time you play, you will progress through scenes until you finish the chapter. The outcome of each scene and chapter will directly impact the next. Your choices matter in Storyfold. This introductory chapter is the prologue, and it consists of two scenes, crossing the river and into the dark. The left and right panels of a storybook are known as your dashboard, and the pages you flip through form the scenes. Together, these will include all the information you need to play Wildwoods. 
Turn the storybook page to scene one, crossing the river. The top page of every scene includes some story text, instructions for setup, shadow effects, and rules and outcomes for how you either win or lose the scene. For now, read the story text and follow the setup instructions for crossing the river. So here we go, crossing the river. Despite her apprehension, Luma followed Brom as he edged toward the river and the path of glowing leaves. The vision was still fresh in her mind, and she couldn't help but think of the deer. It had seemed so frightened. Fear began to swell from somewhere deep within and pushed against Luma's heart. She reached for Brahm's fur, grasping tightly as together they stepped into the water. Okay, so we're only going to use the prologue deck. I've played through all this, by the way, but I'm going to act like it's all new. Uh, don't shuffle it. Each chapter will have its own deck of cards. So we're going to place the entire prologue deck in the story space on the left dashboard. And we're going to draw prologue card three. So here we go. Story. Let's bring it up. Throughout the prologue, you'll be instructed to take certain cards from this deck and place them on or around the storybook as indicated. So take the Luma card, Luma and Brahm, and place it in the Luma space on the left dashboard so the Luma and Brahm side is face up. Take the Brahm card, protect, and place it below the Brahm space on the left dashboard so that the protect side is face up. So we've got Luma and Brahm representing us and Brahm's protect action. These can flip. Brahm can uh, go between protecting and caring for you. And then Luma, if Brahm sacrifices himself temporarily, can be by herself. Next, take the four action cards, explore, light, help, and heal, and place them below the storybook in the order shown. And the four numbered spaces, three, four, five, six, and the three blank spaces are called the river. This is kind of the key action of the game, so we'll hear a lot about this. And yeah, these are our core action cards. And the river, which like I said, starts over here with the three, four, five, and six, is a lot like uh, Ark Nova or Civilization New Dawn. You're going to see more, but basically cards are going to be moving around and making actions better or worse the longer you wait and the more patient you are to use them. Okay, now we take the shadow card lost and place it in the shadow space on the left dashboard so the lost side is face down. Take the two explorer cards, berries and mud, and place them face down in the explorer space in any order. So yeah, these shadow cards are kind of like your timer in the game. As you go through, you'll face more and more of them. In this case, there's only one, and if we take too long, we lose automatically. And the berries and mud are both positive and negative cards that make up this explore deck. You'll be able to take actions to dig in there. Again, some of the cards will help you, some will hurt you. Take the two creature cards, Wald... Take the two creature cards, Waldvark and Cry, and place them face down in the creature space with Cry on top. Take all the crystal tokens, place them in the crystal space. Take all the stun tokens, place them in the stun space. Yeah, we're really setting up here. So here are the creatures. They will be going into that same action row into the river to mess with my actions and also attack me. So you'll see all that. And here's the main tokens for the game. Not too many. You'll hear about all of them in a moment. Take all the location markers. Okay, we already did that. Take the five action dice that are eight side and place them next to the used dice space. This is a game that uses dice for resolution, but uh, you'll have a lot of mitigation. We'll see how that all works. Okay, next is the spirit track. One of the things we're managing is our spirit. As this runs down, it's going to cause us to draw those shadow cards and again, uh, potentially time out. Then we also have the light and the shadow token. And this is another timer. We're going to be trying to move the light token toward the center space before the darkness token, the shadow token, makes it to that same center. And also as this advances, these icons at the top will do things. You'll see all this in a moment. We are now ready to begin playing. As Luma, you will play through scenes by exploring unique locations, healing corrupted creatures, helping various critters, and attempting to bring light back to the forest. Depending on the choices you make as you play, your journey through the wildwoods will be made easier as you help restore the light, or more difficult as the shadow closes in. And then it directs us to look up here. Every scene has these. So I win. If I light the scene, that means moving the light marker to the center. That's the thing I just mentioned. And then I have to resolve the onward locations. We'll talk about locations when we get to that action in a second. We lose if the shadow reaches the center of the Wildwoods track, like I said. Or again, if we advance by losing too much spirit and this lost card being drawn. Can I remain to the core action of the game? Each turn consists of two phases, the Luma phase and the Shadow phase. During the Luma phase, you control Luma's actions. We're going to get all the action dice, all five of them. And then we're going to take action until we've used up all our dice. It's as simple as that. So each of these action cards has a top ability and a bottom one. And I'm realizing this should be <laughs> down here so we can see the numbers. And how it works is you've got your five dice as kind of like action resources. And you can choose any of these action cards and spend as many dice on it. You roll those dice and you're looking for at least the value indicated above the card. So right now exploring would succeed for each three or higher. So here I got one success, whereas help would only exceed on each five or higher one success again. So you can spend all five of your dice on one card or you can kind of mix and match. So here to demonstrate, they want us to do an explore action. So let's go ahead and check that out. 
So like I said earlier, each action card has a top and bottom action. We'll kind of get into those. Right now, we're going to look at all the top actions. So it says explore, gain successes to resolve one explore location. And we've got a few on the board here. We've got cross and onwards. And we've also got help locations like untangle here. But those require the help action card where the color matches. Notice that instead of the explore card. And the number of circles underneath here is how many successful dice we need to roll. So remember, for Explore, it's currently in the 3-plus space. So we need to roll enough dice to get two successes or more. So they're suggesting that we roll three dice. So let's go ahead and try it out. They're going to make us succeed whether we fail or not. But oh, we got three successes, more than enough. So we take one of these location tokens to mark that we've done this one. You can't repeat a location that you've done. And also, if they have arrows, these are prerequisites. By the way, look at that sneaky little shadow boar over there. Oh, man, crows are looking sneaky, too. Um, so uh, we cannot do the onwards one. That's part of the trigger, along with moving the light to advance until we've done the cross one. Okay, and we're going to draw story card one. Uh, here it is. Usually, the uh, story deck would not have all these uh, <laughs> tutorial cards. It would just have stuff like this. And here we go. Let's get into the next part of the story. A cold splash. Brahm entered the chilly water without hesitation. For Luma, the bracing cold was a reminder that home, along with its warmth and safety, would soon be behind them. Brahm paused to glance at Luma and with an encouraging snort, face forward again. Whatever awaited them on the other side, they would face together. Okay, so on play, draw one creature card and then read prologue card 11. So we draw the top creature card. We know this is a cry because they had it uh, set it up that way. But in the later chapters, you do randomize it. And like I said, these are going to go into the river and make our actions weaker and also uh, do damage to us. Damage being that spirit track that's pushing us towards drawing shadow cards. So we check first the on play effect, which says end of river, which just means that we put it in the rightmost empty space. Notice that uh, there's three spaces going to the right that have little hashes or dash marks. Those uh, you cannot do an action under. So like if heal was here, we could not resolve a heal action because clearly you can't roll a dash. Now what's the cry going to do? Basically, if he survives until the end of the round, he's going to hit us for one spirit. These are kind of like his life counters to stun him with the light action. We need to get one success and to heal the corruption on him because these are like nice forest creatures. They're not like inherently trying to kill us. They've just been corrupted to heal them. We can use the heal action to actually get him out of the river entirely. So one success with the heal action will take him out. One success with the light bottom action will stun him. And if we uh, heal him, then we get one crystal. Sorry, I'm kind of getting ahead of the <laughs> tutorial, but that's uh, the basic stuff going on with creatures. Now, I do need to finish out my explore action. So I take, whoops, all the dice that I rolled, these three, and put them over in the use dice area. Let me zoom out a bit so it's a bit uh, easier to see what's going on. So I still have two dice left for my turn. And then only after resolving every effect from my action, including placing the cry, then I take the card I resolved, wherever it is, and it goes to the end of the river, and gaps are always filled in. So now the cry is in the sixth spot. That doesn't really matter, except that he's blocking me from better things, and light is my cheapest, most uh, likely to succeed action. So that was the top action for Explore. We'll get to the bottom action in a second. Uh, next, we're going to try, they're suggesting the help action to resolve a help location. I'm going to do both my dice. I need four or more, and I need one success, that blue dot there, to resolve the untangle effect. And I got two successes, although more successes doesn't do anything in this case. And once again, we lock this off. Remember that the blue help location can only be resolved by the top of the help. The purple explorer locations can only be uh, resolved with purple. And Untangle says I gain two crystals. What's going on with these crystals? Basically, these are free successes anytime I resolve an action, and they go right on the action cards. I'm going to put them both on light, according to the prologue. But the key thing is you have to succeed with at least one roll. So like, let's say next turn I rolled two dice for a light action. Since I got at least, in this case, one success, but here two, I could spend these to make it three or four successes instead. But if I failed completely, there we go, then the crystals could not be used. And each card can have, I think, three crystals on it. I'm sure the prologue will get to that. And I got to finish the action. That's my last two dice. They go over in the use space. And help is going to the back. Uh-oh, the cry is blocking me up even more. Okay, so now we go to the shadow phase. And again, this happens every time you finish all your dice. It is pretty straightforward. So first, we activate all the creatures from left to right. And the activation just means taking their amount of spirit damage, which for the cry is just one. So my marker advances one space to the right. And if it goes here, then I would have to draw a shadow card. And in this scenario, that's an instant loss. In many scenarios, there's at least a couple. So you can lose all of your spirit at least once. 
Yeah, they do say here, shadow cards represent Luma's inner turmoil. If you're ever forced to draw the final shadow card, loss, you lose the chapter. Luckily, your mighty companion, Brahm, has a special ability to protect that can be used once per chapter to prevent you from drawing the final shadow card. Yes, here you go. During the Luma phase, if Brahm is not on the shadow discard pile, you may spend one crystal from any action card to light a creature and flip this card. That's an ability he can use. When he flips, he goes to his care side, which has different abilities. Or once per chapter, instead of drawing the final shadow card, you may place this card face up, protect on the shadow discard pile. And then flip your Luma card to the Luma side. So that's when you stop having Brahm and kind of are by yourself for a little bit because he sacrificed himself temporarily. He has not died in the chapters I've played <laughs> to uh, protect you. All right, now we're not quite done the cries activation. It says after activation, move one space towards the start of the river. End is furthest to the right. Start is furthest to the left. And whenever something moves in a direction and there's already a card there, you just swap them. So, man, he's really <laughs> messing up my ability to do these actions more consistently. Then after you activate all of the creatures, that's where this stuff comes in. So you move the shadow marker one. Remember, if it reaches the center, if we take, in this case, one, two, three, four rounds, then we lose the uh, current scene automatically. Although losing the scene still advances you forward, and it's kind of a fail-forward system mostly. And then we have to resolve any icons above the new space. And again, you have to look anywhere because everything is uh, contained in the little fold-out book. So it's a shadow effect. I draw one creature card. So wah, wah, our other friend is coming to play a Waldvark. So he on play goes to the sixth spot automatically, which means dun, 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 everything to the right is pushed back. And he's a lot nastier. He gives you more crystals for healing him. He takes two successes to heal instead of one, like the cry. Only one to stun with light, though. But if you leave him alone, he will hit you for three spirit, which is way too much. <laughs> All right, and with that, we get our action dice back. We're back to the Luma phase. And next, we're going to show you the top light action, which says gain successes to light one creature. This is what I've already mentioned a couple times, but if you get at least as many yellow circles, yellow successes as uh, the indicated creature, then you put one of these stun tokens on them. They don't go away, but they will not attack you on their turn. All right, I could just do one die and have a pretty good chance of succeeding, but let's go ahead and try for two with the Waldvark. And I got two successes, more than enough. So he is stunned. Now, note that I could spend crystals to get extra successes, but clearly I don't need to here. So let's clean everything up. Oh, and I forgot. Whenever you light a creature, you also move to the end of the river. So that's an even more useful action than I remembered. All right, so the Waldvark is all the way at the end there, right in front of light, since it moves after resolving the entire action. All right, now let's actually get rid of a creature. So the top action of heal. So now you'll have seen all the top actions. Uh, let's me heal a creature. I need one success. They're saying to use all three. That seems a little wasteful to me, but... <laughs> okay, yeah, we got three successes. But yeah, when you heal a creature, you put them in the creature discard pile. Some effects can bring them back. And we get one crystal in the case of the cry as its little reward for healing it from its corruption. And they want me to max light out, so it's all the way there. And we're going to clean up the river, and then heal goes all the way to the back. All right, we're back in the shadow phase. First, the Waldvark activates. He does not hit us because he's stunned, but then the token goes away, and he still does his actor, or after activation, which in this case is actually positive for us. He goes to the end of the river. And shadow advances one, but you'll notice no negative effects this time. All right, so now we get our five dice back. We're back to the Luma phase. And let's uh, talk briefly. They don't go through all of them, but let's talk about the bottom effects. And they want us to try the Explore one first. And it says, for every success, draw one Explore card, choose one, and discard the rest. All right, they're letting me roll two dice this time to get two successes. And I didn't, but I'm supposed to cheat. Yay, look at me. Good rolling. So rolling more successes here doesn't make you resolve more cards. It just lets you draw more cards because in this case, the mud is a negative card. It says on play, move all creatures one position toward the start of the river. Uh, whereas the berries say I can recover to spirit. And these tend to stick around and go into your boon spot. So I can use the berries to get some spirit back later. The mud gets discarded because it wasn't the one card I chose, since clearly I don't want to. All right, let's clean up the river. There we go. And now the two things we need to do, remember, are to explore the onwards location and also get to the middle there. So I'm going to try to do the bottom effect of light, which is advance the light marker. So each success, we'll move it one space. And hey, with uh, three <laughs> crystals there, seems pretty likely we'll do well. All right, so they want me to roll all three dice. Fine. <laughs> Whoa, that was actually terrible. But luckily we have all these crystals. So I got one success since it's four plus. Two, three, four. Zoom. We are right where we need to be. And then light goes all the way back, which means sadly the Waldvark is attacking us. I probably would have played this uh, turn slightly differently if it were me. 
And he makes us take one, two, oh no, three spirit, which would cause us to draw the shadow card, would cause us to lose, but no, no. We're going to go boop and put Brahm on the uh, space there to protect us from drawing one shadow card. So now it's just Luma for a little bit. Luma's eyes widened as Brahm positioned himself between her and the hunting wolves. Summoning her courage, she swiftly sought another route to confront the shadows alone. Okay, during the Luma phase, you may spend one crystal from any action card to reroll one die. All right, so Brahm saved us, but oh no, we need to finish this thing up, which means we need to explore successfully, but that's really far back. Oh, except the, uh, the walled Vark does go back, so that'll at least help us out. So we're going to do all five of our dice, because literally that's all we got to do <laughs> to beat the scenario. And yeah, we got at least one five, only needed one success, so we draw a story card too. Reflection. Was this a taste of things to come? What afflicted these creatures and caused them to act so unnaturally? Maybe this is what the deer had been frightened of, Luma thought. These creatures needed help, and perhaps she and Brahm could bring healing to the forest. It was not far away now. And it says we travel to scene two into the dark. Oh, and by the way, I need to do that and clean up the river first. All right, so we're going to travel to another scene so we resolve all of these icons from left to right. So first we discard creatures from the river for free so we escape from the Waldvark. And we clean up the river, but crystals stay on cards, although because of our bad luck, all the crystals from light were used. We remove all of the markers because we're about to flip the page. And here we go into the dark. Luma sat down on the other side of the river and rested her head against Brahm's reassuring leg. She smiled a little as she watched the Waldvark happily dig up some thick roots from the sodden soil. Her light had proven successful in healing the creature from the crimson shadows, but it had drained her of her spirit. Every time she used the light, she had felt closer to the brink, in danger of being lost to the shadow herself. It made her feel frightened and abandoned, just like she felt at the dead of night when the Notmare came to visit her. In her heart, Luna understood that if the shadow continued to spread, it wouldn't just be the forest that suffered, it would be everything she loved, the creatures she had cared for, her home at the river's edge, even Brahm. The old bear heaved his body with a deflating sigh and nudged her gently. Slowly, Luna's dark thoughts subsided, and she felt a sense of calm return. I am ready, Brahm, she said, meeting his eyes. The bear looked toward the forest, then back at Luma. He nodded, as he had always done when she shared her visions and fears with him. With Brahm by her side and a glowing light inside of her, Luma gathered up her courage and marched towards the unknown. Something or someone was calling her to heal the forest, and she felt ready to face whatever shadows awaited her. But with each step, her sense of responsibility grew heavier and doubt returned. If I fail, everything will be lost. Nerves started to get the better of her, and she held on to Brahm tighter and tighter with each passing step. And that's it for the prologue. We know pretty much all the rules. I do just want to briefly go through the bottom effects, though, before we get to chapter one and show you kind of like real playing of the game. So for help, if you use the bottom effect for every success, you get one crystal, the things that go on your cards and give you free successes. For heal, for every success, you recover some spirits. So it will take longer for you to draw the next shadow card. For light, you already saw, that'll advance the light meter, so that one's always super important. And for explore, you already saw that was drawing the explore cards. And a cool thing is, and a fun little mitigation thing they have, is that anytime you go for a test and fail it, if you're doing a top action where it has a success threshold, like let's say I tried to heal the Waldvark, but I only rolled, hey, there we go, <laughs> with a four plus, I only rolled one success instead of the two I needed. You can use the successes you rolled for the bottom effect. So it's kind of like a little consolation prize if you're going for something that needs two or more successes and you roll fewer than you needed. So that's just like one thing you need to get to see in the prologue, but pretty cool option. All right, meanwhile, except for the action cards and Brahm and Luma, I'm getting rid of everything because we're going to have new stuff for chapter one. And just uh, now that you've seen how the game works, to show you Brahm's stuff. So protect during the Luma phase. If Brahm is not on the shadow discard policy, so you haven't used his once per game uh, stop a shadow card effect. I can spend one crystal from an action card to light a creature and then flip his card. And that's an automatic thing. So even if, uh, I don't know, the Waldvark needed like two or three successes to light it, that's the one where you push it to the back and stun it. Uh, he could do it for free. Basically, he just goes and menaces them. Then it gets flipped to the care side. It says during the Luma phase, you may spend two crystals from any action card to get three spirit back, and that gets back to the protect side. If you use that top effect and it's on the care side, you can't save yourself from a shadow card. So uh, <laughs> you got to be careful if you do that. All right, but yeah, let's, uh, let's show you some real gameplay now that the prologue is there and you know how the rules work, and go to Howls in the Wind. 
The towering trees at the edge of the forest loomed over Luma and Brahm. Now that they were close, it seemed even more foreboding than she had feared. A chilling wind, not unlike the air from the river, brushed over her. She looked down to see the hairs on her arm raised in fear. The moment was interrupted when suddenly Brahm let out a snarling warning. Luma lifted her eyes to find a dark, menacing wolf standing at the forest's edge. Wisps of scarlet smoke circled and trailed around it as the wolf bared its teeth and released a chilling howl. It locked eyes with Luma, and before she could react, another vision burst into her mind. Shadowy tendrils swirled and writhed from an abyss below Luma's feet. Her breath froze as she noticed Brahm beside her, still and lifeless. Dread gripped her heart as she realized what could await them in the forest. Sobbing, she threw herself atop her fallen companion. Luma snapped back to the present. She trembled, the vision reeling in her mind, but there was no time to dwell on it. As she tried to stand, Brahm lunged forward, positioning himself between her and the scarlet-shadowed wolf. The old bear roared fiercely as a magnificent glow of light emanated from around him. Then with a vicious growl, the wolf recoiled back into the forest depths. Brahm, you're alive? Luma whispered tearfully. The relief was overwhelming, but so was the realization of what awaited them in the forest. I can't do this, Brahm, she sobbed. The light around Brahm dimmed, and he returned to Luma's side. Gently, he nudged her and waited patiently. With a deep breath, she gathered herself from the ground and took his head into her hands. Thank you, she whispered, tightening her grip on the bear's fur with resolve. She couldn't afford to lose Brahm or herself to the shadow, and she knew she had to continue. Fixing her gaze to the woods, she stepped towards the forest with renewed determination. Can we get a little uh, basic setup thing? So we put Luma and Brahm, protect in the same place. The spirit starts in the leftmost spot, so I'm not so close to uh, getting the shadow advanced as I was. And I put the chapter one story deck here. It's got seven cards for the entire chapter. Three shadow cards in order. Got a ton of exploration cards. I'm going to shuffle those because each of the chapters is replayable with uh, different stuff coming out each time. And as for the creatures, they tell us to take six of the basic ones and shuffle those as the starting deck. And then all these other ones go in the discard pile, but they're going to uh, come out, don't you worry, <laughs> as we uh, advance through the story. And then we are instructed to resolve the first shadow card, Fear. What if you end up all alone in the dark with nobody to help you? We lose two spirits, so I guess we're not as fully healed as we thought. All right, and that takes us to the actual scene, or the first part of the chapter, Addergate. Soon, Luma and Brahm found themselves along a shady, slithering path. Overhead, endless rows of branching limbs formed a crude archway. As Luma gingerly tiptoed over the mossy ground, a stale odor offended her senses. Sounds of hissing from nearby trees caused a shiver to run along her spine. For a brief moment, Luma thought she noticed a prancing deer deeper within the forest. Maybe it too needs help. Okay, we got a bit more uh, set up. We're going to put the light and dark markers on the far spaces of the track. They tell us what order to have the action cards in, light, help, explore, heal. We get two adders into play, so yeah, we don't have to wait long for that. Each of them does two damage. Ouch. Uh, they start at the end of the river. They go to the end of the river after activating. We get one crystal if we defeat them. And to win the scene, kind of like last time, we have to fully light the scene, get the light token to the middle, and then investigate, uh, resolve that location action. And then, of course, we lose if uh, the shadow advances too much. Here we go, more awesome illustration. So we've got uh, two help locations that can be resolved in either order. Search is one success. Draw three explorer cards. Choose one and discard the other. It's basically a really nicely boosted explorer action. Uh, fetch, retrieve all action dice from the used dice space, excluding the dice you just rolled. So if you can get lucky and succeed on that with a single die, you can get four dice back. Pretty crazy. And then the ones we have to do, pass, that's an explorer location. It costs two successes, and we lose two spirit for each adder in the river. So we are encouraged to defeat the adders first here. And then trying to investigate that deer we saw, we need three successes. Whoa, <laughs> going to be a lot easier with crystals. But if we succeed, we gain two crystals and draw story card one. And again, if we do that and also light this, we can do it in either order, then we'll advance. So hey, we finally get to make our own choices. Let's see what we want to do. Well, I'm thinking first, I probably want to light the adder. Uh, try to... Oh, heal's all the way back there. Jeez. Maybe do the help action to draw that search thing. Maybe uh, heal the other adder, and then maybe I just explore the pass. I don't know if I have enough actions for all of that. So let's try to light the adder first, and I'm going to take my chances with a single die. Beautiful. We got a three plus. So the adder, who needs only one light, is going to get stunned. He's going to go to the back of the river. I guess I could have just done the other adder, couldn't I? And the light is going to go all the way back. So that's one of my five dice. 
And next, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to do the search action, just uh, partially to clear out things and get to the heel. Got it. So I'm going to draw three explore cards, choose one, and discard the other two. So what have we got? Uh, we got two boons. Oh, three boons. Okay, so let's look at our options. Okay, thorns would let me ignore the after activation effects of a creature. So for the adders, that's actually a bad thing since they go to the back, but there are other ones that do nastier things. Uh, for joy, I can light one creature for free. That's pretty awesome. And for path, I can take one boon from the discard pile. So if I get another good explore card, or I can advance the light marker two spaces. Whoa. So two kind of free-ish light things. Uh, the lighting one creature seems really good because nastier creatures come out later. I can always advance the light myself, uh, or though Path has the two options, so that's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Joy. So these two get discarded. Sad that they were both boons. <laughs> I would have much rather had some Banes to get out of the way. All right, and that'll send Help down. Oh, and I have to mark that I have successfully searched, so I can't do that again. All right, I have three dice left. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a bit iffy, because if I fail, the card still goes to the back, I'm going to try to heal the Adder on a four plus with just one die, I'm going to try to get lucky and then explore the pass afterwards. I'm, I'm exploring before, or sorry, after healing because I don't want to suffer as much spirit loss from the pass's effect. And hey, we just barely made it. Okay. So I will heal the adder that is not lit, uh, which means I get one crystal. And that's pretty easy. I'm going to put it on explore because that way, even if I only get one success, I can still explore the pass. So this adder, geez, <laughs> they uh, sure did come up quickly in the world, didn't they? All right, and finally, I'm going to explore the pass, so I need two successes. Let's see if I need to use the crystal. I do not. We got both, so the crystal hangs around, and I'm losing two spirit for each adder in the river, and then this goes down, and that didn't really get me anything except that now I can investigate later, although I have to light that all the way first. And there we go. So a pretty successful turn. Definitely had some good roll in there, although I was not uh, going for super <laughs> high uh, tests. So the adder does not hit me for two, but they still go to the back of the river, so that's great. But we do need to advance this and draw a creature card, which in this case is going to be a Voss. Goes to the end of the river on play, uh, hits for two damage as well. After activation, goes to the end of the river, and you lose one crystal. See, so that's an example of a creature where that uh, cancel the after activation effect thing would be useful. All right, so what do I need to do here? I need to uh, light this four times and do a three investigate, which almost 100% is going to need some crystals. Although I do have one on an explorer already. But yeah, getting the light to move four, I mean, I could just try to do that now <laughs> with, with everything. But you know, let's take a chance. I'm going to do four for light. If I don't quite make it, I can finish it off later. Ah, darn. Okay, so I did get a single miss, so it's advancing three. But that's okay, because I wanted to, with my last die, try to heal the other adder. Got a slightly better than 50% chance. Darn it. I don't have Luma fri flipped to where she can. Uh, let me reroll a die. Oh, well. And before I uh, let the phase end, I am going to go ahead and discard this joy card to light the Voss. So he'll go to the back. He's not going to steal my crystal. He's not going to hit me for two, but the other adder is. Yeah, that was not great. Darn it. Oh, I forgot about the help thing that would have gotten all my dice back. Mm. Oh, well, it's okay. So shadow phase, the adder smacks me for two. Getting closer to the next shadow card. And then he runs away. Oh, darn it. I just realized the Voss is still going to steal one of my crystals <laughs> because uh, I didn't cancel his after activation. The stun just cancels his actual attack. Ah, it sucks. Oh, and whoops. Uh, I need to move this forward. This one says draw one explore card. If it's a boon, discard it. If it's a bane, follow its on draw effects. It was a boon. Oh, crud. All my boons are going away early. But nothing else bad happens. But I'm going to get another monster here. Darn it. Well, here I got, I got this fetch. And on a three plus, I can get all my action dice back. So we should be able to make this happen and then all the creatures will go away anyway. So let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's do four dice on explore to try to get the three for investigate. Ooh, and that's going to get me two crystals as well. Beautiful. So I got the three I needed even with one uh, miss. So I gained two crystals. Let's put one on heal for tougher enemies. And one on, uh, actually, let's put one on Explorer for later. And we're going to draw a story card one. Luma reached for the deer, only for it to vanish into a funnel of leaves and shadow. As she plucked a leaf from the air, it sparked another vision. The majestic creature valiantly warding off a pack of wolves, defending the young woman and her infant child from the shadow. 
Oh, crud. Search the creature discard pile for Nautmare and shuffle it with the top two creature cards. Then play these three cards, or place these three cards face down on top of the creature decks. We've got a really nasty dude uh, coming for us soon. And here's the Nautmare. He goes with a three plus space. He does a billion damage. You can't defeat him. You can only light him. Uh, they suck. Yeah. Well, that's a problem for later. Uh, we have explored successfully. You know, I've got one, but I don't want to light. I want to fetch so I can do more stuff with my turn. So I just need to not get a two plus or one. Okay, seven. That'll work. Uh, so I am fetching. This still gets exhausted, but I get my other four dice back. And that was a help action. Awesome. All right, so now I have four dice. I want to save two for lighting just in case I'd roll terribly when I'm trying to get to that uh, thing. So what do I do with my other two dice? I guess heal is my only option. So I could uh, heal myself since my spirit is pretty low, or hmm, I could try to heal the Adder or the Voss, even though they're about to go away, just because I want to get some more crystals, right? So sure, let, let's go for the Voss. If I roll one success and have to use a crystal, I still get one more crystal than if I had gotten the Adder. So yeah, we'll try to heal that little ferret dude over there. And what the frig? Okay, well, that didn't work. <laughs> and yeah, I can't even uh, do the bottom things. I didn't get any successes. So, all right. All right, well, let's cut our losses and go ahead and light the way with the bottom. And geez, that was as close as it could have been. Good rolling, Mike. And by good, I mean absolutely terrible. All right, so we light the scene and resolve this. So we travel to scene four. We do the same tra traveling thing. So all the creatures are discarded and everything slots in. All the tokens are removed. And we're going to advance to the next scene, but notice that like any boons would stick around. Our spirit stays in the same place. The shadow cards we've drawn are still there. So, so not everything resets within the scenes of a chapter. You do have to kind of uh, keep moving forward and doing well. Willow Creek. A sudden cacophony of shrieks and squeals filled the air around Luma and Brom. Critters of all sizes scattered frantically over the forest bed, pursued by tendrils of shadow and menacing creatures. Luma stiffened, unsure of what to do. Fluttering wings alerted her attention to a cloud of flatterats above. She watched as they swooped down and sunk their claws into a massive waldvark, dragging it into the enveloping fog. Moments later, the boar reemerged from the darkness, its eyes ablaze with malice. Okay, so we reset the Wildwoods track. That's the uh, the light and dark tokens. We get a Waldvark and a Flatterat. The Flatterats suck, <laughs> as you'll see in a second. Uh, to win, we have to again light the scene fully and travel all the way. And we have a mix of creature card draws and this one. This icon is the source of all your tragedy in this one. Uh, if there is no Flatterat in the river, search the creature discard pile for a Flatterat and bring it into play. So they're going to keep on spawning back almost every single round. Now, who cares? What's a flatter at, you ask? Why, it's this thing. Pretty easy to heal, pretty easy to stun. Goes to the end of the river when it's played, but after activation, do not move. As long as this creature is in your river, even when stunned, you cannot spend any crystals. So this thing just uh, wipes out your crystal spending ability. By the way, I just realized the Waldvark should be in the six spots. That's where they enter on play. And then the Flatterat is back here. So yeah, they, they like really encourage you to heal the Flatterats out of the way. But then uh, when you do, they just come right back. So it's, uh, it's you know, not, not the best. <laughs> not my favorite creature in the game. Look at what we've got here. So first is Wade. Place all your variable action dice into the used dice space and gain two crystals. Yeah, <laughs> not uh, not great. You want to try to do two successes like right when you uh, are about to be finished for the round. Then we've got Hide. Move one creature to the end of the river, then draw story card two. And Rescue, if there's a flat around the river, discard it and do not gain any uh, crystals and then draw story card three. Now it'll still come back if you haven't advanced the light all the way. And then our help locations, Dispel, advance the light marker one space, then draw three Explorer cards, choose one, discard the others, pretty good. And then Distract, rearrange any cards in the river, excluding the help card, so you can like put all the enemies at the back. All right, fun, fun, fun. We're going to start out by trying to light the Waldvark. We'll see if we can get a single success. Got it. So he is pushed to the back and stunned, which brings the heal up in case we uh, want to <laughs> go after the Flatterat. That puts light all the way back here. We got four more. I want to wade, but not until I only have two dice. So maybe I take my chances and try to help with the dispel spot. 
No, I'm going to just go for it. Uh, what are my chances? <laughs> Four plus on two dice. Apparently just enough. Uh, okay, so I advance the light marker one space. I'll have four more to go. This is a longer track, obviously. I get three explore cards. Let's see if all the, the banes we haven't been seeing are going to pop up now. Okay, there we go. So I don't have to look at them. <laughs> the stuck and the sting I can discard. What would they have done? Ooh, lose three crystals and lose two spirit. But instead, we'll resolve the berries. We can use this at any time. Uh, or sorry, during Luma's phase only to recover two spirit. We can do that later. And it worked out very nicely. And now the big one, I'm going to try to explore, do the Wade one. It would uh, lose me no dice if I get three plus on both. Pretty good odds. Pretty good odds. What the heck? Dude, I cannot believe these like barely by the thinnest of margin successes. Okay, so I place all of my available action dice into the used dice space. So that was already the case. And then I gain, ooh, two crystals. Oh, I can't use them yet. Um, hmm. I definitely want more on Explore because the rescue one I need to succeed at. And then I already got an extra one on Heal, like if I want to heal the Wall of Arc later. Uh, let's get an extra one on Light for doing this later. Okay, and then Explore goes to the back. I will have to defeat these uh, flatter bats in a second, I think, but not quite yet. Wait a second. I definitely, yeah, I, did, I, I helped, but I didn't heal. I think I forgot to move this back. And that was, I think I lit first, then I helped, then I explored. So yeah, heal should be at the front. That is right, I think. All right, so we got our creature activations. The Flatterat um, hits me for two. I can counteract that with the berries, but I'm definitely getting close to the second shadow card. There's three in there, but of course I sell a Brahm. And then they don't move, which is <laughs> so terrible. Uh, then the Waldvark does not hit me because of the stun, and goes all the way back. So he's not too bad for me right now. And this goes forward, and the Flatterats would have come back, but they don't get another creature next round. That's terrible. All right, here we go. Um, hmm. So if I wanted to, like, fast-track things, I mean, I can't hide and then rescue in one turn, most likely. That'd be pretty crazy. I mean, I think I want to heal the... Do I heal the Flatterats? Or do I just, like, kind of deal with them? Yeah, I guess I want to. Okay, so I'm going to try to heal the Flatterats. Um... Let's go for it. Let's need to not roll a one or a two. There we go. So I get two more crystals, which is pretty crazy. And then, hmm, okay. Probably want a ton of light. I'm pretty good for exploring. So yeah, let's make light maxed out. Now they can actually use crystals. And then, um, hmm, instead of lighting the Waldvark, I think I'm going to go for this. And then I want to try to hide. So the hiding only needs one. The lighting needs four. Let's... Let's keep two dice for the explore and go for the uh, light right now. All right. So I got two successes. I'm going to spend two crystals to go to the full spot. So I'm all the way where I need to be there. I got one crystal left. And now I really want to hide. And I'm going to use both of these. This is for exploring, by the way. A good thing I did because <laughs> I only got one success. I don't use any crystals, uh, but I do this. So I move one creature to the end of the river and I draw story card two. Amidst the commotion, Luma dashed behind the large trunk of a nearby tree. Timidly, she peered out to find a tiny squirrel stranded near the water, squeaking for help. Eek! Hold on! She cried, desperate to rescue her friend. Ooh, on play, I may lose one to three spirit to retrieve an equal number of action dice from the used dice base. Whoa, let's, let's do three. Get them all. One, two, three, but I'm going to eat some berries and put it almost back to where it was. Okay, and that was explore. Okay. And yeah, with three dice back, let's... uh. Let's try to heal the Waldvark, right? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go all three. Um, I have an extra success to add if I roll really badly. There's a four action. I need two successes. Got them both. So I don't have to spend the crystal yet. And I get two more crystals. Let's, um, I don't know. Let's, let's spread the wealth a little bit. Sure. Okay, that worked out way better than I expected. <laughs> of course, things are about to get terrible again. But all I got to do is get to the rescue space. Uh, so this shouldn't be too bad. So no creatures to resolve, amazing, but I first spawn the Flatterat and then the top creature of the deck, which don't forget could be the Nautmare that's waiting for me. Okay, the Flatterat comes into the end of the river, and the new creature is just a Cater, I guess that's a cat, uh, goes to the four space, I hate that, <laughs> and then uh, does only one damage. After activation, end of river, then draw one explore card. If it's a boon, discard it. If it's a bane, play it, same as that uh, other effect we had before. But yeah, pushing everything back is annoying, especially that it, since uh, Explore is all the way at the end. But actually, I should be able to fast track. Yeah, this is going to work out great. Look at this. I'm going to do two for help, which is in the three position, to distract. 
Um, perfect. I got one, the one I needed. So I can rearrange any cards in the river except the help card, which means, heck yeah, let's put these enemies at the back and explore at the front. Friggin' great. So then help goes to the back and explore is in the prime position. Now, I still can't use crystals, so I'm going to roll three. I just need to get two for rescue. And, oh my god, are you kidding? No! <laughs> All right, I can choose to use the one success for the bottom here. Draw one uh, explore card, choose and discard. Gosh darn it, of course. I didn't have to resolve this, by the way, because I knew that one card was pretty dangerous. Okay, at the start of your next Luma phase, you retrieve four black action dice instead of five. <sighs> okay, it's fine, it's fine. I mean, it's not really that fine because now the Explorer is also all the way to the back of it again. Oh my gosh, can't believe that roll. When it gets worse, uh, the Flutter Rats are hitting me for two and the Cater for one. And that's right, I'm going to draw another Explorer card and resolve it. Now look at this, one, two, three, ugh. Oh, you know, I could have... Yeah, l let's say that I did this. I think it's probably worth it. Before my turn ended, before I activated the enemies, I could have uh, spent one from any action card. I don't know. Let's get uh, the extra one on heal. And that would let me light any creature, and then I can flip this to its care side. And I'll say that I lighted the, uh, the flatter rats. That way I wouldn't take the two damage. So I have two more spirit than I had. And I have to do the cater's effect, but it's a boon. Uh, so let's discard it. So that wasn't too bad. Okay, this goes, and the flat arts would come back, but no, they don't. And I only got four dice. God, how do I do this? I don't think I can. Well, actually, if I heal the flat arts away, then all I got to do is get a single success for rescue. So let's go for a healing action on the flat arts with one die. Don't whammy me again. Good. Gets me two more crystals. Um, let's uh, do that with them. Okay, there we go, there we go. Oh, and heal goes to the back, so that's actually even better, because now it's a five plus 50-50 chance. And let's go for the other three dice uh, to explore. And we got the crystals, we can actually use them. We seem to get a single five plus. Got it, jeez, okay, so I do have to spend one crystal for the second success. Uh, if there's a flat around the river, discard it, no. And then I draw story card three. A furry friend. With desperation in her eyes, Luma leaped into the water. She reached the helpless squirrel and scooped into her arms just as a flatterat swooped by. You're safe now, Eek, she whispered gently. The squirrel let out a thankful squeak then sprang from her arms to face the sound of distant howls. Oh, I forgot how good this was. <laughs> Take the ten-sided, yes, ten-sided, gray action die and add it to your available action dice. So for the rest of chapter one, I get six dice a turn, and one of them is a ten-sided, which means slightly better chances of rolling well. But that's okay, because we have lit the scene and resolved rescue, so we're going to travel to Antler Hill. So the bats are gone, thank God. The friggin' cat is gone. These come back, and I got a ton of crystals, plus my D10, feeling awesome about that. Thank you, squirrel buddy. That brings us to the final scene of chapter one. So what the hey, we'll try to finish it, I guess. I was thinking I'd stop early, but I don't think this will be way too long, hopefully. Antler Hill. As Luma and Brahm rushed to escape the encroaching shadows, the sound of howling grew closer and closer. This way, she shouted, pointing to a small clearing ahead. Maybe we... Suddenly, Luma stopped in her tracks. Atop a small hill in the forest stood a gigantic wolf formed of scarlet shadow. It glared down menacingly, its gaze fixed to the pack of wolves that circled a familiar-looking deer. <gasps> the same deer from my visions. In case we were set the Wildwood, uh, and the story card four is still on top of the deck. We removed it from the game. So this is, uh, you have, like, kind of branching things sometimes. So if we had lost the last mission, we still would have gone to Antler Hill, but this would have resolved and some other stuff would have happened. Okay, we draw story card five, though. And, oh man, this guy sucks. I forgot how much he sucked. Look, three attack, a Skadolf. He goes to the end of the river. And after activating, he moves one space toward the start of the river. Then this card is at three plus, and there's a shadow card on top of the shadow discard pile. Activate that card's on play effect. So, for example, it could keep on resolving the fear over and over again, just like shocking my body with it. And look, it cannot be healed. It can only be lit. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, then we also get a wolf from the discard pile. And there they are, two attack. They start out in six plus. And after activation, they go to the end of the river and then clean up the river and draw one creature. So if you don't defeat them, they bring more. And they're pretty tough to heal and stun. And we're not helped by the fact that I have heal in the <laughs> backmost position. And then also as we draw one creature card, please don't be the nightmare. God, okay, it goes to the three plus spot. <sighs> Then if there's a shadow card on top of the shadow discard pile, activate it on play effect. So we're getting afraid. Gosh darn it. And this thing is after activation, discard this card and clean up the river. Then draw one creature. Do not activate the shadow phase. <sighs> 
Yeah. And by the way, uh, stunning it will not stop that thing from happening. It just uh, <laughs> will stop it from doing four damage to us. All right. This is great. This is great. This is great. Everything's going to be good. I mean, at least I can use my crystals, right? That's that's something. All right, this time slightly different. We have to first light the scene to win and then resolve the banish location. We cannot banish the Scadolf until we have lit the scene fully. And we're going to be drawing creature cards and bringing wolves back. Once again, we're just bringing back the nastiest things in the pile. Okay, we're trying to save the deer here. So first we got to assist it. Swap the position of any two cards in the river except the explorer card. Then we got to defend it. That'll gain us a crystal and we draw story card six. Then we got to banish the scad off, but again, only after we've lit everything. Uh, we can do a find, a single success on help to get three crystals. Blaze, we lose one to three spirit to advance the light marker one to three spaces up the Wildwoods track. Oh man, we're already so hurt. I mean, things get tough. Things, uh, things do get tough. That's what we want to do here. Uh, I mean, if we stun the Nightmare, or not Mare, won't hurt us a ton. If we stun the Scadolf, then it won't hurt us a ton, although it would still advance forward. The Wolf, I kind of need to heal, or he's just going to bring more creatures in, but then he's just going to resummon himself. Oh, I hate these guys. Now, positive, I do have a bunch of crystals, and I do have six dice. Uh, that's not six. Where's the last one? Six dice. <laughs> there we go. Um, and I also... I kind of want to flip Brom back with care so he can, first of all, stun people or stop shadow cards from resolving. Although I guess we're not that close to the final shadow cards. I don't really need that right now, but that would cost two crystals. Hmm. Which one am I on? I'm on light. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you noticed, uh, <laughs> two successes for assist, three successes for defend, five successes for banish. So if you don't have some crystals built up in explore, yeah, good luck with that. All right, I really want to heal the wolf, but gosh, that's so far away. Now, once and once only, I can discard a wolf with a help action. Maybe that's what I do first here. Well, no, actually, first, I should probably try to light the Knotmare to not get totally destroyed. Although, I mean, if one of the two get me, I'm going to get the next shadow card. I don't think there's any way to stave that off forever regardless. All right, so first, let's try to light. Um, try to get it moving along. I'm just going to let the damage hit, I think. And deal with the consequences and then try not to get hurt again. Um, so let's do three lights. I'm not lighting a creature. I'm uh, just lighting the path here. Okay, and I'm not using my best die yet. So I need a four plus and I got two of them. One, two. And wait, that one, that blaze thing will move at three. So let's spend one more to get it to there so that the, uh, the blaze help location would get us to the end. Okay, and then... <laughs> um, We'll take our chances with a single die with the help card. Uh, so I just need to get a single four. Uh, whoops, don't throw it out of the way, Mike. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to distract, and I discard the wolf. I don't get anything, but at least he's not going to summon another monster right now. Although we're just like, God, the friggin' Skettle just advances. I mean, we do have, uh, I mean, if we light him, we can put him at the back. So that's like something we got to consider doing. All right, so I got two dice left, including my good one. And now I guess I really want to explore and then, like, leave heal for next turn. So now let's go and uh, explore for the assist. I'm going to use both remaining dice and hopefully not have to use the crystal. It's in the four plus spot. Gosh, darn it. Really? The ten? <sighs> okay, I'll spend the crystal. I hate this. <laughs> so swap the positions of any two cards in the river except the explorer card. The Nautmire is about to go away, so let's uh, swap help and Skidolf and just put him back toward the back, even though he's still going to continue walking forward. Uh, that did get us one step along the way there, although I lost all my crystals on Explore. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. And, huh. Um, I don't think it's going to completely stop the shadow, but let's go ahead and flip Luma by sending a crystal from Help and from Light. I think I'm decent on both of those now. Although I guess I do want Light to light the scat off, but whatever. All right, so this is going to flip back over, and I get three spirit back. But then I'm losing four and then three. Yeah, so it's definitely not going to be enough. <laughs> so what was it? It was I got one, two, three back. One, two, three, four from the Nautmare. And then one, two, three from the Skidolf. And I'm feeling some doubt. Surely it was a mistake to come this way. What could someone like you possibly do against such darkness? Oh, God, move all creatures one position toward the start of the river and then lose two spirit or two crystals. I'll lose the two spirit. Yes, wait, hard. sorry, I'm, I'm going ahead myself. So the Nautmare activated. Uh, after the activation, I discard this, clean up the river, and then draw a creature, but it doesn't activate this phase. And it's another cry. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, and then the Skidolf 
activated. Um, he attacked me. That made every creature advance one. And then he advances again toward the start of the river. And if this card is at a three plus and there's a shadow card on top of the discard pile, he's going to resolve it again. Gosh darn it. So that's going to make me uh, move all the creatures forward again. And yeah. Oh, and then this. And then the wolf comes back. Dude, I forgot how hard this uh, last chapter was. And this is, uh, by the way, there are like things the designer told me that can make the chapters harder if you replay them. <laughs> I don't know how much harder this could get without being insane. All right, so we're coming back around. Let's, uh, let's try to heal the, the wolf first. Yes, I know he's going to respawn, but it'll get me two crystals. I can put them on explore and set myself up for future success. Let's do the D10 and the D8. Um, I have crystals if I need to spend them. So targeting the wolf, I need two successes. Got them both, so no crystals needed. And again, I get two crystals. Oh, and sorry, he should have been in the sixth spot, but it doesn't matter. So he would have been there when he spawned, and then these would all go back. You know, definitely putting the crystals on the explore card. Okay, and then heal. Great, the Skadolf is there. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to use the protect ability again to stun the Skadolf using one of the heal crystals. And importantly, I can push him to the back. So my cards will be more useful this turn, and he's not going to do his little, like, resolve the terribleness again. I don't care if the cry hits me for one, although he does go toward the start of the river, so that's kind of annoying. But Brown's back on his care side, and he can't protect me from the final shadow, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, let's do help next. Um, and let's, hmm. Let's actually do the, 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 the find one, I think. Let's try that out. So I'm just rolling one die, because really I just want to get the card out of the way. And that's a one, so it did not work. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, now I have three left. Can't explore yet. I could light the cry just to get it out of the way. That, that seems like maybe the way to go. So let's try to light this guy, stun him just to move him, really. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, that works. So he's also stunned, and he also goes all the way to the back, although the light goes after him. And then, okay, for my last two, going to go for uh, the defense. So I need three, so I need to get at least one. But really, I'd, I'd love to get as many as possible so I can save some crystals for banishing. Uh, boop. Okay. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. I got to spend them both. Oh, but I gain one crystal. Put it right there. And then I draw card six. Respite. Together, Luma and Brahm sprang from their vantage to the deer's side. The wolves snapped and growled, confused by their sudden arrival. Looking up, Luma felt a burst of courage begin to form within her as she watched the deer stare defiantly at the wolf on the hill. Move all creatures to the end of the river in the order of your choice. Heck yeah. <laughs> then draw three explore cards, choose one, discard the others. Oh, I love it. All right, uh, Skadolf will be at the way very back. And then cry uh, behind him. Okay. Oh, and then uh, the explore, though, of course, goes to the back afterwards. So that worked out pretty well. Let's see what explore options I get. And yeah, if I can just uh, do the help to blaze, that'll get me to the end of here if I spend enough spirit. And then I just got to do a huge explore action if I can. Uh, nice. Oh, they're all boons. Okay, so happy. Ignore the on play effect of a bane card. Oh, no, I'm not planning to draw any more banes. Bliss. Ignore the on play effect of a shadow card, except the last card, so that's too late. Lucky. Ignore all damage from a single creature. Okay, I mean, that's that's decent. Hopefully I won't be around that long, but <laughs> so it goes. And we go to the enemy phase. This guy does no damage, but he moves towards the front of the river. This guy does no damage, but he moves towards the front of the river. Please stop doing that. <laughs> and uh, then we get the wolf back. And he goes, oh, i got to do this correctly. He goes to the six spot. Okay. So yeah, I said I had to explore a whole bunch, get five successes. Uh... Uh, seems like that might not happen for a bit, <laughs> unless I could stun people really effectively. And I really have, like, no crystals. All right, all right, going to try my luck again with a single D10. I'm going to uh, try to mm, uh, heal the wolf with the heal. Okay, and good, got it. So if I spend the crystal, I get two crystals back. Definitely putting them both on explore. So I'm now only going to get two successes to do it successfully. And the wolf is gone, so I'll have five dice. Of course, the explorer is like a billion miles away. Um, oh, that was heal, so it's not as bad. Okay, and then the help. I got to do the blaze one, right? And I really can't fail. So I'm going to do two. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll do, I'll do two. I'm, I don't think I'm going to do the... I'm not going to try to do the explorer this turn. I'll try to do it early next turn. So I'm going to do blaze. And, okay, thank God I did. Or sorry, help uh, with the blaze uh, action. And I'm going to lose the max of three spirit to go there, which puts me here. Um, the cry's doing one, and the Skadolf does three, so I'm actually okay-ish. 
all the way at the Skadolf. will move all the way to the front and force me to resolve that negative card again. Crud. I've got three dice left. I mean, I could go for Explore of the Banish. I would just need to get all, no, two successes out of three on a six plus. That's really bad odds. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I have Lucky. So I can stop the skull for doing his three damage, which means I won't die. So really all I want to do is uh, light the the cry, I guess. Or I could go for lighting the Skadolf, but again, I need to hit on all the dice. And I don't need to advance the light marker at all, so like the, uh, the consolation thing would not help very much. Actually, you know what? Really, I mean, <laughs> if I'm going to ignore their attacks anyway, it doesn't really matter that much, except to move them. So let me just try to light the cry, just to get him backwards uh, behind Explore. So that's a 5+. plus. I'll do a single die. I failed. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I just really wanted to get Explore front and center. So I can just blow all my dice on it next turn. And then we'll give it another try. Last two dice, let's try to heal the cry. I just need one six plus, and we got him. That's not it. Dang it. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Still got some options next turn. We might be okay. So yeah, we're going to use Lucky to stop the Skidolf from attacking us. Uh, but the cry still hits us for one. And it doesn't end there because the Skidolf comes over here, and he resolves the Doubt card effect again. I'm not going to lose the two crystals. I need them on Explorer, so bleh. <laughs> and that, that's a loss. I, I don't even I don't want to use my crystals to flip him to my Protect side where he could save me. <sighs> okay, okay. All right, all right. Um, 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 um. I could just go for it. It's a 50-50 chance with each die. All I need is two, and actually it's better than 50 chance for this one. Is it worth it? Or should I do something else first? I could do help to try to get three crystals. What would that do? It wouldn't really help me out with the crystals. But what it could do is flip him to heal me a little bit. And then I could flip him right back with the third crystal I got to um, to push the like Skadolf all the way back. And then that would make the Explorer hit on a 4+, plus instead of a 5+. plus. But I'd really have to use like probably two dice to make that. I don't think it's worth it. I think I'm just going to go for it. So I, I definitely lose if I don't get this. Well, not definitely. I guess I could blow all the crystals on Explorer for like the care light combo that I was just talking about. But yeah, I just need to get two successes, y'all. Just two fives or more. Here we go. And okay, Jesus. I was looking. I was like, there must be there. <laughs> they weren't. And then I saw the five that was over here. So that's one, two, three, four, five. The scene is lit, so I can bat. Oh, did I forget? I did forget to summon a new creature, didn't I? Crud, crud, crud. Hold on. Would this have messed? No, okay. He would have come in at the end of the river, which means that it would not have uh, hurt the probability of the explorer I just did. So we're okay. Story card seven. That was way closer than I would have liked it to be. A veiled retreat. Filled with a sudden sense of boldness, Luma raced up the hill, the light in her hands radiating brightly. As she reached for the wolf, a deafening screech pierced the air. The wisps and trails that formed the wolf swirled loudly and violently. The creature grinned as its bestial form dissolved into nothing but scarlet shadow, leaving behind only a single sinister snarl. You win this chapter. Travel to scene seven. All right, so we're traveling again, uh, which means the cry and the skidolf and the other cry. Does everybody go away? So here we go, onwards. As the scarlet-shadowed wolf vanished into the forest, so too did the wolves that followed it. The clearing fell silent, though the tension in the air remained, like a storm waiting to break. Luma took a deep breath. She hadn't been certain her plan would work, but the deer had made her feel so courageous, and she knew something had to be done. I can't just leave them, she thought to herself. The forest, these creatures, they need our help. Luma turned to face the deer, the one from her visions. It was struggling to stay on its feet, exhausted from its confrontation with the shadow. As she approached, the deer laid down to rest. Luma knelt down and placed her hand on the deer, hoping to heal it like she had done with the others. As she closed her eyes, a light began to glow from her hand. When she opened them again, Luma could see the pain and exhaustion had vanished from its face. The deer lifted its head and locked eyes with Luma, and a vision flashed in her mind. A gigantic oak tree, bigger than all around it, stood somewhere deep within the forest, wreathed in shadows. Its branches were bare, save for a handful of softly glowing leaves seemingly ready to fall. Behind the massive trunk, Luma thought she could see the distinct shape of a woman and a child hiding, but the image dissolved in her mind. With a sigh of relief, the deer rested its head on Luma's lap. In the silence that followed, Luma's heart pounded like the heat of distant drums. The image of the giant oak tree lingered in her mind, and she pondered its meaning. The leaves are calling me. Whatever awaited her there, she knew she needed to find it quickly, before the shadow would swallow it whole. 
Then, breaking the stillness, a twig snapped nearby, followed by a soft rustle of leaves. Luma stood up quickly, her eyes darting toward the sound, but she saw nothing. After a moment, she looked at Brahm, who was sniffing the air. We need to keep moving, Luma said, more to herself than to the bear. All right, so this is where the prototype ends, although I have played more in the TTS mod, and it's cool. Uh, based on which of, like, the branching paths you achieved, you unlock different cards, and like I said, you could play, th I think, this is what the designers told me, but I haven't actually seen this, that there will be, like, things to, if you play through Chapter 1 again, make it tougher, make it more varied. All right, so let's get to my thoughts on Storyfold Wildwoods. What can I say? I adore this one. I think the art is beautiful. I think the storytelling is magical and lovely. When I was playing it the uh, first time, I was uh, I was playing like some adventure epic music behind me. It was just awesome. Um, it reminds me a lot, even though the gameplay is not very similar, of something like Island, something shiny, just a game that really draws me into the world, makes me feel enchanted and curious with like the mystery of what's going on. You know, I don't know how how dark the story will get but so far I would feel very comfortable playing this with my family and kind of seeing how they feel but the mechanics are cool too and this is why I would also compare it to Island Something Shiny like it's, it's a game that I love the story of but the mechanics are engaging I said previously in the video I love this whole river mechanic in like every game I've seen it in Again, the big ones being uh, Ark Nova and Civilization New Dawn. And there's a slightly different take on it. You know, in those games like Ark Nova, you get to do more with your actions. You get to, like, accomplish more, build more buildings, draw more cards. Here, it's a really interesting take on the concept where the longer you wait, the more you uh, move things to the front, the better your probability of success becomes. So I think this is an awesome system. I, I really love the core mechanics of it. It is tough to decide what to do. All the actions are useful. And it's interesting comparing it to something like Ark Nova or Civilization in that because your dice are like your actions and even a single die can move a card to the back, you can really like fast track your way to doing actions in the order you want them to if you're willing to kind of like suffer the consequences. I like how the, the enemies kind of muck up things. And even in chapter one, you can see that the effects are getting more and more interesting and you have to really kind of consider where they're going to place people. And there is a lot of strategy here. Like, for example, I didn't really go digging through the Explorer cards because you can hold up to three boons at a time. And if I had, you know, I really fast-tracked, if you watch the full playthrough, I really fast-tracked those uh, early scenes in Chapter 1. I could have slowed down, built up more crystals, built up a lot of Explorer cards and boons, and then tried to use all those to fast-track the final scene. So, like, there, there's different ways to kind of approach the chapters, and I really enjoy that. But again, even more than the mechanics, I just adore the art and the storytelling. And I also want to say this story fold thing is such a cool system. And I'm hoping the fact that it says story fold Wildwoods, that if this is successful, they'll make more. Because I already, <laughs> you know, want to see this system, this really cool, just like story folding kind of thing with just some cards and dice and tokens. I want to see this applied to more settings, more themes, more stories. I just adore it. So yeah, I I'm all in for this one. I'm a big fan. And I fully recommend anybody who likes uh, narrative games, who likes uh, interesting kind of like resource management games to check this one out. I guess the one caveat, um, I'm not sure yet what the additions will be to a given chapter and how they'll make it tougher on replays. So, you know, if you're looking for something that has a ton of replay, this might not end up living up to that. Also, as you saw in the playthrough, sometimes you just roll like crap <laughs> and things don't go your way. Again, the story goes forward. It's mostly fail forward, although I, I think I misstated in the playthrough. If you do like really badly, you do just have to repeat the chapter. Like there, there's ways to fail forward, but you have to have like some success. Like if I had died in the very first scene of chapter one, I would not have failed forward uh, then, I don't think. But yeah, if you don't mind that dose of luck that does have some mitigation and planning uh, tied into it, I think this is a slam dunk. So, so excited to see this on crowdfunding. I hope it does great. So yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, go check out the game page once it's up and we'll see you at the next stop.